Hi foxes! Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, thank you so much for joining. My name is Brittany. I am also known as Shop Foxborough on Poshmark, Etsy, and Instagram. And I like to bring educational content to the community and try and talk about um, vintage and just different things that a lot of reseller YouTube channels are not focused on. Um, I do have haul videos and sort of fun stuff, but I also focus a lot on educational content. If that sounds interesting to you, I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button down below. Today I have a video for you where I go over all of my sales from February on Etsy. So Poshmark is my main platform, it's absolutely my main money maker. Um, I don't really sell much on eBay but I do sell on Etsy. I started selling vintage um, on Etsy almost, I think, eight years ago. And um, it has been my main platform until I found Poshmark. And at first I didn't list a lot of vintage on Poshmark because I felt like the buyers didn't want to pay very much for vintage. I felt like it was a younger buyer who didn't like understand um, the value of vintage but over time I've gradually listed more and more of my vintage on Poshmark um, and now it is the first place that I list anything that I have so I list pretty much everything on Poshmark and then cross post using Vendu over to Etsy and um, my sales on Etsy are not a lot compared to my sales on Poshmark but February is usually a pretty good month for me and this year was pretty good as well. Not as good as last year, but I wanted to go through all of my sales with you and kind of show you what is selling over on the Etsy platform, what I got for each item, um, and just kind of let you judge for yourself. Etsy is a list it and forget it um, platform. So you put an item on Etsy and you can set it to auto renew. You pay 20 cents for every three months, I believe, that you have it listed. Could be two months, but I think it's three. Um, and yes, yeah, so you pay a listing fee for putting your item up, just like on eBay, except that your listing lasts for, I think, 90 days. So that's really nice. You can load up your Etsy shop and then there's no sharing, there's no social aspect to it. It's just buyers finding your items on Etsy through searches and keywords. So that is a really nice um, element to it. I will say that setting up your Etsy shop is time consuming and that sales on Etsy can be very slow if you are not established or listing unique pieces or listing regularly. So those are some things to think about. If you do have any other questions about Etsy, leave them below. I'd love to do a video for you guys about selling on Etsy and just kind of talking in more detail about that platform. Um, especially if you are on Poshmark or eBay and considering cross-posting to Etsy, the type of questions that you would have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cut off here and we're gonna jump right over to my computer so I can show you the listings on Etsy. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna jump right in with the first item. Now, this February, last year February was my best month on Etsy, and I sold $1,083 last year. Um, so I was really hoping for something similar, and it was a little bit down this year. I sold $824 on Etsy before their fees were taken out. Um, I did not do any advertising, but I did try to list between 5 to 15 items every single day. I was catching up with um, sort of listings that I had put on Poshmark that were vintage, but I did not yet have on Etsy. Um, and I definitely saw results from that, from listing on the regular. Um, so I do want to try to keep that up. So the first sale was this floral kimono. Um, it was Japanese. You could see that it was um, all rayon, just really pretty and very nice condition. And that sold for $62.39. So unless I say otherwise, the buyer does pay shipping on these items. 
I did run a sale um, this year that was 20% off of my entire shop on items that had already been listed. So um, anything that was in my shop at the start of February was discounted 20%. Anything that was added to my shop during February was not on sale. Um, but this item was on sale. So it sold for $62.39. And that 20% off sale was the same as the one that I ran last year, so I was trying to replicate that success. Next up is this belt. This was very popular on Poshmark, but once I listed it on Etsy, it did sell here. It sold for $27.19, so that was with a discount, um, because usually my sales, my um, item prices end in $0.99, cents, so if it doesn't end in $0.99, cents, it definitely had a discount on it. This I picked up at an estate sale. Um, oh, the kimono I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. Um, so, you know, very low cost of goods there. This I picked up at an estate sale. So my cost of goods on this one was about $2. Um, and yeah, it sold for $27.19. This was another piece that I picked up at an estate sale. I had four of these. I sold one on Poshmark and one on Etsy previously, and then I've sold this one now on Etsy. So that's two on Etsy, one on Poshmark. This one sold for $100.79. Very beautiful beaded 1970s piece, um, very rare, and I just loved the iridescent tone of this one. This was also a two dollar piece i think it's very important to note that when you are selling vintage honestly the price that you pay does not matter like you could get it for free and you still need to price it at the value um that it is worth because you are out there finding it it is rare to find stuff like this it's not like these are a dime a dozen so even though i only paid two dollars for it it was my time to drive all the way out to this estate sale about an hour away to wait in line for two hours that morning um, and then to go through and try to find things that I felt would be worthwhile to bring back, photograph nicely and put in my shop. So, you know, cost of goods is almost irrelevant, um, especially if it's lower. Next up was a bundle. I don't usually get a lot of bundles on Etsy, but I have three this month, so that is good. This was a bundle of two aprons. This one was new with tag. You can kind of see the little tag there. Um, full aprons are much harder to find than half aprons, and anyone who cooks or gardens will almost always prefer a full apron because um, it just preserves the clothes better. The bottom had this very nice like sheer little ruffle so that one sold I don't I think I got that one at Brimfield I don't remember how much I paid a few dollars and then the second one this I'm pretty sure I got at the Goodwill outlet um, another full apron nice pocket it did have some faint stains and spots those two bundle or those two aprons sold together for $25.58 The next was another bundle. This I had on Poshmark for what felt like forever, and I, I really couldn't believe that it hadn't sold yet. And I did a specific Instagram post um, about like, why hasn't this amazing piece sold? It was a 1930s bias cut nightgown. Um, I don't entirely remember where I picked this up, but I believe it might have been at the Goodwill outlet. Um, so this sold in a bundle with this blue gingham crop top, which I had had listed since January of last year and was right about to give up on. And then someone bought both of those together and the bundle was $95.98 for those two pieces. <clears throat> Next up was a... 70s wedding dress. I picked this up at the Goodwill outlet. Um, and 
I did not price it very high because it was fully synthetic and the elastic at the um, shoulders had basically stopped working. Uh, it did come with a veil. Let's see if I have a picture. Yep, yeah, so I don't know if that's how the veil is supposed to look, but it did come with a veil. Um, I didn't think it was going to stay up and show correctly on my dress form, so I did model it. The back photos that I took didn't really, like, I don't know what was wrong with them. But I did not have a back photo, but someone still bought it. It was priced modestly, and I got $31.19 for it. I did call out that the arms had lost their elastic, um, so it was priced accordingly. If it had been in pristine condition, I probably would have priced it closer to like the $60 price point instead of that $36, $38 price point, but... Yeah, someone was definitely going to have to get this worked on um, to make it wearable, I think. The next one that came out of my basement, so this was a free cost of goods for me. When we bought our house, um, we bought it from family and it had many, 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 many years of accumulation. So this is my, these are belong to my husband's aunt no is that right yes my husband's aunt um when she was a little girl their children's sunglasses they one of them had the original pin like one side had the original pin but the other side had um just like a curled over sewing pin in it so those were gonna need to be repaired but i still thought they were super cool it's vintage little bunny rabbit cat eye sunglasses uh, and those sold for $31.99. And that, even though that ended in a 99, that was with a 20% discount. This piece I had on Poshmark for a really long time. It did have interest, but it didn't sell there. When I transferred it to Etsy, however, um, or cross-posted it, it sold relatively quickly and it sold for $31.19. It did have free shipping on it, so that cost me $5.27. Um, and I believe this was one that I picked up at the bins. Next up is a cardigan that I got at the bins. I just thought that this would be fun for someone maybe going to Vegas or doing a card night. Um, I believe it was from the 1980s. It was by Contessa Visconti, and um, yeah, it just kind of had like pearl accents and these like applique cards, and uh, that sold for $28.79 on Etsy. This was a book. I used to work at a used bookstore. We got in this large lot of books that had been... Um, reprinted and bound in like library binding and this was one that I ended up picking up because I liked it I had two of them I sold the first one already and this is the second one so now both are sold and it is just a um it's more like a reference book for uh people who might be artists or like pattern makers or something like that so that sold for $20.79 with free shipping, which cost me $3.33 via media mail. This piece I had for a very long time. I don't use that gray background anymore. Um, it sold for $23.19. It's from the 1950s. Here is a tag. Could have been 1960s. Um, but yeah, just a short sleeve, lightweight cotton blouse that you would tuck in to a skirt. This next one was one that sold very quickly once I cross posted it from Poshmark. This sold for $24.99, which was the full asking price. It was just a basic tooled leather belt. Here it is on the dress form. And I really enjoyed that piece. I'm glad someone picked it up. 
The next one was listed on Poshmark for a very long time. Um, I did eventually manage to cross post it to Etsy and it sold here. This sold in a bundle. It was this diamond uh, like style metal necklace, which I'm pretty sure I picked up at a flea market. And this half apron with these pretty little floral accents on it and a ribbon belt. And those sold together for $44.78. The next was a vintage children's item, vintage hush puppies, very cute, size 2T, had these little airplanes all over it, um, just really adorable. Those sold for $18.39 with free shipping, which cost me $4.18 to ship. Next up, this sold, I want to say same day that I cross posted it to Etsy. It sold very quickly. It was a light pink camisole slip top. It sold for $15.99, so full asking price. And it was from around the 1970s, made in the USA. I had had this listed on Posh at least a month, um, and it ended up yeah, selling here very quickly. The next was a set of juice glasses. It was just like a mixed set. These were mine, um, but I conmarried my my uh, pantry a while back, and I decided to give these up. These sold for twelve dollars and seventy nine cents. Next up is a black leather backpack. I had this list listed. Sorry, that's my dog. I had this listed on Poshmark as well. It is by Marco Bugiani, which I don't know that brand, but backpacks tend to trend very well for me. They sell well. This one sold for $54.39 on sale. The next one is a piece of fabric. So I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. I think the backpack I got at the bins too. Um, yeah, so the fabric sold for $31.99. I believe that was actually a sale price too because I know I've had this listed for a while. It was a large piece of fabric, three over three yards, so I thought that someone would be able to make a dress from it. I washed it and dried it. It didn't have any stains. It was in nice condition, um, so yeah. This was another one that I had on Poshmark for a very long time. It um, sold on Etsy for $37.59 with free shipping, which cost me $4.08. Um, I was toying around with free shipping back at the beginning of 2019 after, or maybe it wasn't the beginning. It was, I think it was towards the end actually of 2019. Um, when Etsy was really pushing their free shipping and they changed it so that if you do not offer free shipping, your items are not going to show up within the first couple of pages of results on Etsy. So I found that very outrageous um, and I did not end up uh, continuing with that, prog uh, with that offer. But yeah, anyway, $37.59 free shipping. <clears throat> this one was a vintage Sears and Roebuck Winnie the Pooh dress. It did have a couple of issues. It had a little bit of repair at the neckline, um, but overall just very cute and rare. It was a size 4T and that sold for $44.79 with free shipping, which cost me $3.67. And the last one was a vintage um, petticoats and pantaloons dress. This, I believe, was another, it was either Sears or JCPenney, let's see, Sears. Um, and it just had these little, like, almost strawberry shortcake looking characters, but it is called Petticoats and Pantaloons. That sold for $23.99. Um, and that is it. That is what sold on Etsy last month during February. 
Again, it was $824, which is down from the prior year, um, $1,083, but I was still very happy with these purchases for the most part. My cost of goods was very low on these pieces. A lot of things that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet um, or just had from my own home or um, picked up at estate sales for low cost. So that was definitely a pretty decent month for me. So that is what I sold during February. So I hope that that video was informative for you guys. And um, again, if you have any questions about these sales or about Etsy, go ahead and drop me a line down below. Uh, please do hit like, thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this kind of content. Uh, I would like to talk more about Etsy, but I don't know how many people are really interested in it. There's not a lot of people out there talking about it. Um, Etsy sellers do kind of tend to keep their cards close to their chest. Uh, one other person that sells on Etsy is Poetry of Nice, but I think she is selling a little bit less and she doesn't have a lot of content about it. Um, but yeah, so if you are interested in Etsy or selling vintage there or you have any other questions, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And again, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.